Well, today marks the one year anniversary of Unai Emery's appointment at Aston Villa. It's been some upturn in their form with Sunday's 4-1 win over West Ham, moving them to within a point of the top four. Have you been surprised at how they've performed such an upturn in, in form? I think they were slightly, because they were underperforming so much that I think mm. it's why it considered, it's considered such, a, such an upturn. They, they do have some quality players in mm. this side. We've seen the, the level that Ollie Watkins has reached to now. I mean, they've been able to bring in some fantastic players as well, like Diaby, who only a few seasons ago was being quoted mm. at nearly £100 million to try and buy him. They got him for a great deal. You're now seeing Leon Bailey work really well. Mm. Um, uh, Louise is uh, smashing it in midfield. McGinn as well. They... Unai Emery is a fantastic manager and I think with the way things ended at Arsenal um, it probably led to people thinking he was a lot worse than he actually was. He's a, he's a brilliant man manager, a brilliant tactical manager as well, has so many um, different assets to his game and has been able to, to use the kind of players that Aston Villa had which were good uh, to his advantage. So, yeah, do you think he was unfairly treated at Arsenal then and why didn't it work there but he's managing to work miracles with Villa? I mean that goes without saying that he was uh, unfairly treated at uh, Arsenal. I mean, to follow in the footsteps of Arsene Wenger yeah. after such a legendary manager, it's always going to be hard. And actually, I think he did all right. You know, got, got the club to a European final. If you look at the state of that squad, True. in particular the defence, and you compare it to now, and the amount of money that Arteta's had to really yeah. turn the squad around, I think Unai Emery did very well. But in many ways, I feel as if Villa is the perfect level of club for him. A slight underdog, like yeah. we saw at Villarreal. Sometimes, like we saw with Sevilla, when they're punching us sort of above their weights against the, the, the big boys of Spanish football, he seems to be able to get the best out of a squad that has something to prove. And at Arsenal, like I said, difficult transitional periods. But with this group of players, he's elevated not just the signings that they've made. Credit must go to the whole Aston Villa board for the players they've brought in over the past few years. Mm. He's got the best out of new signings, old signings. He's just brought everyone to a higher level. And that is just fantastic man management. I think Unai Emery is brilliant and I'm happy that he's no longer being sort of mocked in the way that he was. Mm. Speaking of bringing them up to a higher level, sitting pretty, aren't they, in the Premier League, up there with the big boys, Sunday's win over West Ham, James has put them uh, amongst some pretty elite company. Yes, it has indeed. 11 straight home wins in the Premier League. Only the treble winners, Manchester City and Atletico Madrid, have longer current home winning streaks in the league. And here's what we were trying to show you a little bit earlier on today. This is what Aston Villa have achieved since Unai Emery took charge of the club. They're currently third in the table in 2023. And here is what we're about to tell you in terms of the home run. It's been quite remarkable. The first time Aston Villa have gone on a run as good as this at home since 1983, so 40 years ago, when they won 13 in a row at Villa Park in the league. Now, before this spell, they'd only won 10 of their previous 30 home league matches. They've got Luton at home next on Sunday. They'll bat themselves to make it 12 in a row. And also, they'll bat themselves to score plenty as well. Unai Emery's side have scored three or more goals they're opening four league matches of a season for the first time in 102 years. The fans, the season ticket holders at Villa Park are certainly getting value for their money at the moment. And they're absolutely loving what they're seeing from Ollie Watkins as well, aren't they, guys? Just how impressive has he been and consistent as well? Mm. He's unbelievable. Uh, he, it was really interesting insight we saw after the game at the weekend where he's talking about the movements and how he's learned to time his runs and just stay further up the pitch. He's not going into the channels anymore. He, he's all about just trying to score goals and get in the box and we're seeing that. I mean, his, his record ever since his days at Exeter is remarkable, always hitting double figures as a striker. Unai Emery seems to have really tapped into that. Him and Diaby just stay super high, yeah. stretch the opposition and create space for each other and then they attack. They're so direct as a pair and I, yeah, I mean, Zach, we, we love Ollie Watkins on Football Daily. No, he's fantastic. I mean, he's somebody that I think ever since he's come to the Premier League has been able to adapt really, really well. Um, obviously, there was the period where Aston Villa as a whole weren't performing and that's where he kind of dropped off a little bit. Um, but we've seen him be versatile. He's, been, he's managed to play off that left wing at times for Aston Villa. But I think you're right, under Unai Emery, as a, as a striker where he's kind of been told to stay to your position, just get into that box, be the, be the number nine. We've really seen him... To, I feel like this season, mm. we've seen him take it up a level. The finish on the weekend, to cut onto your weak foot, smash it into the top corner. You know, it's, it's something that you feel like you should be seeing a lot more of but 
He's just, he makes it look so easy. And that's why he's giving, you know, Gareth Southgate a problem when uh, he's got to look at who he selects. Yeah, speaking of that, perfect understudy when it comes to, to England for Harry Kane, do you think? I think so. I think, you know, Callum Wilson's a brilliant striker too. We shouldn't un yeah. overlook what he's been doing at Newcastle. But at the moment, particularly his ability to drop out wide if needs be, his sort of selflessness for the team. I think Ollie Watkins is in prime position to be in, uh, not the squad, but the squad before, I couldn't believe that Nketiah was picked over him. I think now there's no debate. Watkins, if he keeps this up, will be going to Germany, in my opinion. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, I think it's quite similar. I've, I think the understudy one, it depends, because it's always going to be Harry Kane, yeah. I think, yeah. unless there was an injury. And so I think when it gets to it, it's more about who's on form in, in those weeks leading up to it, because you want to take the person that's kind of netted maybe five and six over the past couple of uh, games before the tournament. Like right now, Ollie Watkins, 100% for any international um, games that are coming up, makes complete sense. But, you know... Obviously, the tournament is still a while away, obviously, at the end of this season. And so I think it depends how he, he'll end his season as to whether he is the person that gets picked. You wonder how Villa are going to end their season. Though, Very true, yes. Yeah. Yeah. How that's going to work out.